<clears throat> good morning. Good morning, everyone. Let me give it about another minute here, and we will move forward. All glory to his name. Good morning again. You are on just the word with Evangelist Stephanie Johnson. And it's great to be back in California. Amen. I thank God for what he has done. I'm going to just have a word of prayer before I start talking. Uh, gracious Father, we thank you this morning uh, for, for, for you waking up. We thank you that you woke us up. Uh, you woke us up to your loving kindness and your tender mercies. You woke us up to another beautiful day, oh God. We're alive, we're well, most of all and above all, God, we are saved and we are sanctified. We're full of the Holy Ghost and that with fire. So we thank you, Lord, we thank you for another day and another opportunity to breathe the breath of life, another opportunity to be a witness, another opportunity to make known your deeds among the people. And so we thank you right now for these social media platforms and other ways and other means of getting the gospel out. Lord, we praise you this morning. I'm asking you to touch everybody that's listening this morning. Asking you, Lord God, to let these words that fall from my mouth, hallelujah, be an encouragement, be a motivator, be a stirrer up, be a cleansing agent. Yes, Lord, hallelujah. Be, be, be something that will provoke someone to good works. Uh, that it'll encourage someone to hold on to your unchanging hand, that it will encourage someone, that your word will encourage someone to call on your name and to cry out, what must I do to be saved? God, that's the most important thing, the most imperative reason why we put the gospel out and disseminate the gospel, that somebody can be saved, that somebody can be won to the kingdom. And so we thank you this morning Hallelujah, for your spirit that rules and for the Holy Ghost that prevails in the name of Jesus. And God, I give you the praise, the glory, and the honor for everything in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, once again, I thank God, hallelujah, for a new Monday. Yes, uh, good morning to everybody. Good morning to my baby sister. She's always, uh, most of the time, on there to support, and I thank God for her and for others that are on um, and that will be uh, listening later on. Look, I, I want to talk about something this morning that the Lord gave me thousands of feet up in the air <laughs> on an airplane. Uh, my husband and I had an opportunity on the uh, 8th of, of July to fly to Florida, uh, Orlando, Florida, and to, uh, to do a wedding, amen. And my husband was the officiator. And uh, I had a, a, a part in, in the wedding, but we're just grateful to God for the doors that he's opening up. But I want to talk about um, the holding pattern, because uh, while we were on our way to Florida, uh, uh, to, to the Orlando International Airport, uh, we experienced uh, some, some inclement weather. And, and, and uh, as you all know, the... Um, hurricane had just passed through florida uh the day prior and i think it was going on up north uh, up, up the east coast in the northern uh pattern but we thank god that he blessed us and um i just want to talk about i want to take my time and, and 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 talk about this because i want somebody to be encouraged this morning yes um we were uh really in hopes of landing at a certain time and we had we had things planned and uh we had to pick up our car at a certain time we were going to do this and we were going to do that and um while we were we were over florida uh we were getting ready to land i was excited because i'm i'm not too much of a, a 
plain person, <laughs> but sometimes you got to get where you're going. Amen. But, um, you know, the, 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 the plane began to descend to, to the, uh, the pattern that it was going to land in. And, uh, then he is ascended again. And so I'm sitting there like, okay, first of all, my husband hasn't been on a plane in a while. So I'm trying to keep him cool, you know, and not, I don't want to get, you know, stirred up again. So, uh, the, the plane began to ascend again. And um, I, I wasn't sure, I was trying to figure out, is this part of the landing over this way or, or, or what's going on, you know? Um, but um, we, we began to go in, in circles. After a few minutes, I, I realized we were going in, in circles. And I wrote some of this stuff down because I wanted to take my time and explain something here because God is a good God. And, 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 and we began to, to, to go in circles and we, we were going around and finally the pilot came on the intercom and, and let us know um, that we were in a holding pattern. And uh, I figured it was something because I know, okay, it's a few minutes have passed. We should be landing by now. But the flight, uh, the, the aircraft was in a holding pattern. And, and, and while uh, we were in this holding pattern, I began to, 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 to pray and, and, and just to settle my spirit because it's easy to get uh, uh, nervous and anxious and, and all of that. And, 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 and some people, you know, they were, they were uh, uh, getting impatient and like that. But uh, I, I began to just settle my spirit. I say, okay, Lord, and my favorite scripture, Romans 8 and 28, and we know that all things working together. I mean, all the scriptures started coming out of my belly and into my spirit and reminding me that God was with me. But um, as we were in this holding pattern, and, and when I got back home, I, I checked it out, and a holding pattern is uh, a flight path that's maintained by an aircraft awaiting permission to land. It is a delaying tactic used by air traffic control. It gives the pilot and air, and air traffic control time to make adjustments and to coordinate clearance for abnormalities or emergencies. I'm gonna say this again, a holding pattern gives the pilot and air traffic control time to make adjustments and to coordinate clearance for abnormalities or emergencies. And so again, I, I, like I said, I began to pray and I began to settle my cell phone down, you know, and uh, just uh, wait, yes. And, and right there, the Lord began to speak to me. Uh, so I wanna share with you what God gave me thousands of feet up in the air over Florida in a holding pattern. Now, while we were in this holding pattern, I, I, I observed some things, you know, that, that we were up in the clouds and we couldn't see the land because of the clouds. We didn't have any control over what was going on. Others were becoming frantic and impatient we couldn't see our way out because of the clouds. We couldn't see which way we were heading, north, south, east, or west, because of the clouds. All we could do was wait. And I don't know what <laughs> I don't know what anybody else was hearing, but I heard the Lord, I heard him say, Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. I started, look, I stilled myself. We have control. I stilled myself. Amen. I don't care how my husband was reacting, which he was pretty cool. He wasn't saying anything, but he was kind of looking around and I could tell that I've been with him a long time and I could tell when he's trying to figure it out. Amen. But sometimes, and I, and I thought about this, sometimes in our Christian walk, because it's first natural and then spiritual. And I began to think about a Christian walk right there, right up uh, over Florida in that holding pattern. I began to think about our Christian walk and how sometimes we'll find ourselves 
in a holding pattern in our Christian walk. Yes, we, we, we're not where we, where we started out. Amen. We're not where we began. Um, and, and we're just about to reach our destination. But for some reason, we can't get there yet. Some reason we can't reach or arrive to that point that we are looking to get to. Because after all, we have hopes. We have expectations. We got things to do. We got places to go. We got people to see. We have things to do. We have agendas. You know, we had a marriage to do. We had a car to pick up. We had a hotel to check into. And it was a beautiful um, millennial suites hotel. Amen. And, and we had things to do. You know, we wanted to eat. We were hungry. There were different things going on. But we could not get there because we were in a holding pattern. Because there was a storm that was at the Orlando airport that had just, it had just begun to rain real bad and they had to close Orlando International Airport down. And so we couldn't even go to our destination at the time because it would have been dangerous and, and we just weren't ready yet. And sometimes in our Christian walk and God knows it, amen, we, we, we don't get there. And I, I don't wanna move too fast because I wanna talk to you this morning, Ooh, glory. But, but Isaiah 41 and 10 told us, fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. Look, I don't know about the other people, but I, had a, I, have, I have a God that I serve. Amen. I have a God who's the creator of all the universe. My God, hallelujah, hallelujah, is the creator. My God is God, and beside him there is none other. He continues to say, I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with thy right hand of my righteousness. Look, I was Lord, I said, Lord, hold this plane up here with your right hand and every other hand that you have. Amen. And we have to be settled and know that God is God. Even when things are rocky and we're in a holding pattern, we got to realize that God is God. He's in control and he's allowing everything that's happening to us to be. Psalm 27 and 14 told us to wait on the Lord and be of good courage and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Listen, sometimes in that holding pattern of Christ, when we're, in, we're as Christians and we're in a, in, a, in a place in our lives and in our test and in our trials, well, we just can't do anything but hold on to God's unchanging hand. We can't do anything but wait. We've tried everything that we know. We've talked all that we could. We've tried to fix everything that we could. But we have to learn how to be still and know we would start. He is God. Amen. He's in control. And the devil is not doing anything that God has not allowed him to do yes and amen hallelujah we you know and there were times in this holding pattern to descend yes and it seemed as though we would land <laughs> i thought we was on our way <laughs> okay it's over now and we're getting ready to land but then we would ascend again to the holding pattern of circle that's right. And sometimes when we're in this Christian walk, there are times, amen, in our trials when it seems like there's no progress and there's no change and, 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 and they act in the same way and, and, and they're doing the same thing and, and I'm praying and I'm fasting and I'm seeking God for them and I'm, 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 I'm laying before my face asking God to change this situation and to deliver and to save and to heal and whatever our petition is. And it, and it seems like it just keeps on, it stays with us. It seems like a just is attached to us. Amen. But you know, I hear the spirit saying right now, no cross, no crown. Uh, if we suffer with him, we'll reign with him. So settle down and wait on the Lord. There are times, amen, it, that it seems like God is not hearing our prayers. And it seems like 
we're not going to come out. I remember going through a man for about 15 years and I, I had just watched, raised up my sleeves. I said, okay, if this is my life and my lot, I'm going to settle into it and I'm going to work it like God want me to work it. But God was teaching me how to settle down, be still and wait on the Lord. You know, there's a scripture that talks about in our quietness and our our, our stillness is our confidence. Some I should, I need to, I should have found it in Isaiah, but 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 we have to learn in our tr in our test and in our persecutions when they're talking about us to just be still. Jesus didn't get all ruffled up about anything. He didn't get all agitated and impatient and anxious. In fact, the Bible told us to be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplications with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. So we can't get riled up and impatient and anxious while we're in that holding pattern because there's really nothing that we can do about it. We just have to learn. Jesus is teaching us how to wait. Oh, yes, yeah, sometimes we're praying for people and we don't understand, you know, uh, exactly what God is doing, but we know God is doing something because after a while, if you keep praying and fasting in that holding pattern, God is going to talk to you. Uh oh, I don't want to get ahead of myself, <laughs> but God's going to let you know how you love O'Shea, what he's doing. I remember, and I, I oftentimes go back because we got to experience and be first partakers of what we're talking about. Amen. And I remember there was a time when I was praying and praying and praying, laying before my, laying prostrate in my living room floor, praying all the time and everything. And after a while, God told me, said, you are suffering. You are reaping what you have sown. And so I settled down in my spirit. I said, okay, Lord. Okay, because I know I had done some crazy stuff. Amen. I had done some crazy stuff to my husband. And so I had to, and I had to reap what I had sowed. I had done some crazy stuff in my life. Amen. But after a while, after a few years, the Lord revealed to me, now you're suffering as a Christian. Amen. So we have to learn in our tests and in our trials that God is still going to let us know and speak to us. Yes. And it's not, and, and, and after a while you learn, it's not my mother and it's not my brother, but it's me, oh Lord. I'm the one that's standing in need of prayer. I'm the one that needs something. Amen. Just when it seems like you're getting ready to come out of that test, here comes another one. Amen. Back to back. You, 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 you're going through tests and at the house. The children ain't acting right. They got these different lifestyles and different things, and they, they doing it. Then you go, excuse me, go to work. And 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 the, and, and the folk at work talking about you and and, and whispering behind you and, and, and backbiting and, and and threatening you. Oh yes, amen. But and, and there's no reprieve, amen. You you can sometimes even go to the church house, amen, and it seemed like everybody's against you. It seems like that. Amen. And the devil will conjure things up to seem like that. But let me let me let you know something that, that you know, when it seemed like that, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Bible said, thank you, Holy Ghost, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. He'll lift up a standard. Amen. In other words, I got the victory already. Even in the midst of your trial, you have to know that you have the victory. Oh man, hallelujah. There's no let up. It seems like sometimes it seems like there's no reprieve. I, 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 it seems like uh, there's no break and, um, but God is doing something in us. And we have to know that, that if God don't allow us to go through these situations and get in these holding patterns, then we won't be uh, a fit and ready for the master's use. He got to put us on the potter's wheel and he got to make and mold and shape us. Amen. God is doing something. So we have to learn how to stay in the holding pattern until God brings you out. We may be delayed. We were delayed. Amen. We were delayed almost a couple of hours. Amen. Then we had to deal with some other stuff. But in your Christian walk, know this, you may, it may be delayed. It may not come when you want it, but God is on time. Amen. It may be delayed, but it's not denied. We hear that often time. It's not denied. Amen. Hallelujah. It's just delayed for a minute. Uh, and, and, and if the truth be told, sometimes we're just not ready for it yet. We're not ready for it. We are not ready 
for the change. Amen. And so God allows us to stay in that holding pattern. If God had done uh, what he's done recently with my husband back then, I wouldn't have been ready. Amen. I wasn't ready. My disposition was messed up. I had a bad, you know, it just things needed to be fixed. Amen. God is clearing things out of you that's not like him. That's why we stay in that holding pattern. That's why we stay in there. And it seems like we're going around because God is taking things out of you that he's not pleased with. And you know how they're coming out? Because you're starting to pray. <laughs> you're starting to fast. You're starting to seek the Lord uh, uh, like never before. Amen. I tell you, tests and trials and folk and, and acting crazy toward you will cause you to go to your knees. Yes, it will. Amen. But that's just what God is intending to happen so that we learn to trust and rely on God. He's clearing everything out that's not like him. He's making adjustments in our disposition. He's making adjustments in our attitudes. He's changing our perspective on things. When, when, when we thought, amen, there's a way that seemed right to us. Yes, but the end thereof are the ways of death. There's a way that seemed okay to us. But it was not the way God wanted us to do it. It wasn't the way God wanted us to handle it. And so we stayed in that holding pattern until we learned that God is God and he's doing something in our lives. He's preparing us for what lies ahead. And as I said earlier, sometimes we're just not ready to handle what he's got set up for us. But he's preparing us because God loves us. And he's preparing us for what lies ahead. And above all, he wants us to make heaven. I'm going to make heaven. And whatever God has to do with me, you got the purpose in your heart, God, whatever it is, Lord, take it out of me. I'm not looking at him. I'm not looking at her. It's me. Take it out of me so I can learn how to deal with this situation the way you. Jesus didn't tell uh, 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 the Lord to, in fact, he did pray, if it, if it be possible, let this cup pass. But then he said, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. And we say we want to be used of God. We say that we are God's children. But when he gets ready to start making and molding and shaping us, are we ready, hallelujah, to take it the way he wants us to take it? No cross, no crown. Number five is that God is setting things in order. I didn't tell y'all the numbers earlier, but this is the fifth one. God is setting things in order. Like I said, I wouldn't have been ready to, 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 to deal with an elder back then, but now I know, hallelujah, because God, you know, he will make and mold you. He'll shape you. He'll fix you to where he can speak to you, to where he can lead you, to where he can guide you. Ah, but we got to know, 1 Peter 4, 12 said, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you. Yes, we ask the question, why me, Lord? And I hear the old saints always say, why not you? Amen. Why not you? If you say you're a Christian, that means to be Christ-like. And so we're going to have to suffer. Amen. The things they that live, they that shall live godly in Christ, they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. You shall go through, but God is with us and he will never leave us nor forsake us. Uh, uh, 1 Peter 4 and 13 says, but rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. Listen, there's a reason why we're in a holding pattern. There's a reason why God is allowing these things to happen. There's a reason why. Amen. And, and then uh, 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 here's another one. Where, uh, uh, Psalm 30 and 5 says, um, for his anger endured but a moment, and in his favor, favor is life. Weeping may endure but for a night, but joy cometh. In the morning, weeping may endure for a night. 
You may be weeping for a long time. Your night may be a day. It could be a year. It could be 10 years. But joy is going to come. And we got to know what the scripture says. That's why the Bible tells us to study, to show thyself a proof unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. We got to have a reservoir of scriptures down in our belly so that we can fight the good fight of faith and lay hold on eternal life. And, and and so while we were in this holding pattern, I kept thinking, okay, any minute right now, we gonna land. But we kept going in circles. So with that, I still had to wait. Somebody type in, I had to wait. I have to wait. I have to wait on God and be of good courage. Don't be waiting, complaining. Don't be waiting, murmuring. Don't be waiting, doubting. Wait and be of good courage. Be a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Yes, don't be entangled again with the affairs of this life, but trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. Because in all thy ways, you should be acknowledging him and he'll direct thy path. So finally, after we waited a while, uh, and after being in this holding pattern for about 40 minutes, that's a long time, <laughs> the pilot came over the intercom and he said, there's a storm at MCO and we can't land there. So we're going to land at Fort Myers. We're going to refuel. Get this. We're going to refuel, and when information comes that we are clear to land at MCO, we'll head that way. Just like the Mr. Pilot came over the intercom and let us know what we were getting ready to do. Amen. God will speak through his word. Amen. And he'll let us know what's happening. And many times, amen, We he's speaking, but we just can't hear him because we got our own thoughts and our own agendas and we're listening to another voice but we got to know the voice of god from the voice of air god will let you know what's going on he will not leave you hallelujah without knowing what's going on amen he will speak to you it may not be what you want to hear. You want to hear victory and blessings. Yes, and you can speak victory and blessings right now because it is yours. Amen. But right now, I got to get some things out of you. I got to work some things in you. Amen. I have some things that I have to do in you. Amen. See, God is doing something. So you have it. When we got to Fort Myers, that was not our destination. And sometimes you got to stop. Amen. Hallelujah. And refuel. Amen. Now and again, we have to ask God, fill me again. Charlotte, let us see. Ah, thank you, Jesus. So that we can continue the race. Fill me again. Empower me again. Anoint me again. Give me a fresh word. Give me a fresh something, God. Whatever I need right here where I am. I'm not where you want me to be yet. I haven't gotten to that actual victory, but I have the victory in the name of Jesus. And that's what we have to declare that even in the holding pattern, amen, even, oh, thank you, Lord, even while we're going through the persecution, yes, you're going to be saved. Yes, I see my daughter saved. Yes, I see my son saved. Yes, I see my friend, the shackles loose. Yes, I see my in-laws free of dope and smoking. Yes, I see it. Amen. And you, and, and, and that's why the scripture declares uh, uh, Abraham believed God and it was accounted unto him for righteousness. Just believe God. I don't care what you're dealing with. I don't care what you're going through. Just believe God. Hallelujah. Uh, because you got to see it. Somebody say you got to see it before you see it. Amen. You got to know it before it manifests. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you got to feel it 
before it comes to fruition. I, I knew my husband was going to be saved because the Bible said that a sanctified wife said, I knew it. Amen. And it took another several years before it actually happened. But God was working things out in me. Stephanie needed to be fixed, not David. God had him. You got to know that God I got your people. He got your son. He got your daughter. He's going to take care of that. But in the meantime, you get right. You get fixed. You you let every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God be a part of your life. Yeah, glory to God. You let the word of God be manifested in your life. Amen. I I I'm I don't I'm gonna try to finish this. <laughs> I'm gonna finish it today. I don't care how much of time it takes. Amen. Sometimes uh, uh um 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 oh, we, we when we ask God to fill us again and we're in that holding pattern. We, we got to realize that sometimes, you know, we're there and we haven't gotten to that destination yet, but God will make a way of escape that you can continue to bear it. First Corinthians 10 and 13, there is no temptation taking us, but such as is common to man, but God is faithful. That's all we need to know is that God is faithful. Yes, he will. God is my portion. God, I'm leaning on his everlasting arm. We got to know that God will not suffer us to be tempted above that year able, but he will with the temptation also with that trial, with that test, with the persecution, with the not knowing, he'll also make a way of escape. Why? Not for you to get out of it and not deal with it, that ye may be able to bear it. <laughs> and in that way of escape, what are you doing? Are you complaining or are you praying? Hallelujah. Are you complaining or are you compromising? Oh my God. Thank you, Lord. In that way of escape, what do we have to do? We got to pray for help. When God gives you a way of escape, I remember God gave me a way of escape back, back when, and, and I took the way of escape, got away, went to Paris, California, got me some rest, and, and I was missing things at home, so I came and left my way of escape too soon, came back to the fire. Lord, I packed my bag, <laughs> and I went back to my way of escape. I said, okay, Lord, I learned something. When he makes a way of escape, you stay there, and you get what you need so that you can get back on the journey, get back on the horse, get back in the race, and you'll be able to complete it. In the way of escape, pray for strength, pray for help. Amen. Right there in that way of escape, God will revive you. He'll recharge you. He'll renew you. Amen. He'll revive your spirit so that you can continue running the race because the race is not given to the swift, nor is the battle to the strong, but he that it endureth. We got to learn how to endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Yet we got to learn how to endure, go through it. Amen. Not with complaining, not with wonderment or doubt, but complain, but but with joy. Amen. <laughs> Rejoicing as much that you are partakers of Christ's sufferings. Oh, yeah, that's what he said. In that escape, the word and the spirit of God will comfort you and he'll settle and keep you. Yes, the Bible said that after you have suffered a while. So you got to go through that suffer a while. And there's a lot that each one of us have to deal with. Amen. And you can't get away from it unless you go back and backslide. And it's too dark for me. My worst day in God is better than my best day with the devil. I heard somebody say that. Amen. But after you've suffered a while, he'll, he'll, he'll make you perfect. He'll settle you. He'll establish you. Hey, and he'll strengthen you. Yes. After you have suffered a while. Amen. In the storm and while waiting, God will give you peace uh, uh, that passeth all understanding. God is perfecting that, that he has instilled in you. He's perfecting it. He's got a work to do in us. Because when we came out of the world or we came out of sin, there was a lot of work to be done. Amen. I don't care if you was a drug addict or you were just a good person. There was a lot of work to be done. Amen. Dispositions, attitudes, perceptions, like I said earlier, needed to be adjusted. Amen. And, and, and so while we were at Fat Fort Myers, many people, they disembarked and they stretched their legs. And, and I even went into the little tunnel and, and called the people that were waiting for us and let them know, hey, we're delayed, but we're on our way. Amen. And some people got a bite to eat and, 
and, and some people were also on the phone calling loved ones amen letting them know okay we just here for a minute we delayed but we on our way amen and i just knew we were going to get to our destination i had no doubt amen because i served that kind of god amen so after about 45 minutes passed we were back in the air we landed at Orlando International Airport within about 20 minutes. And needless to say, <laughs> everything, the, 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 the wedding ceremony, the event, everything was spectacular. And it was a success. Why? Because we had a charge to keep and a God to glorify. And he was going to make sure that his work was accomplished. That's why you need not worry while you're in this holding pattern. You need not worry while you're in your test and trial because God has a work to perform in you. And he which had begun a, a, a he who which had done a good work in you will perform it until until the day of Jesus Christ. He done began a good work and it's his work and he's going to perform it. What is going to be our attitude and our disposition towards our God? when he's performing the work, when he's getting us ready for the work. Even though you can't see your way, even though you don't know how you're coming out, even though you question when is the pain going to end, even though you don't know when your change will come. I heard the man Job say, all oh, my appointed days. I'm going to wait till my change come. Then he said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. You got to know that though God is allowing this to be, I'm still going to trust my God because it's working together for my good. So I'm in this holding pattern. I'm going to stay right here and let God do what he has to do with me until I'm perfected in his sight. Oh, yes, Isaiah. 40 and 31, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. Wait on the Lord. Wait, I say, on the Lord. It might seem hard sometimes, but, but run the race. Uh, in fact, Hebrews 12 and 1, wherefore seeing we are compassed about with such a greater cloud excuse me, of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us. While you're in that holding pattern, start disrobing, start taking off some stuff. Lord, fix me, clean me up, wash me, purify my heart and my mind. Because when you're clean from the inside, it's going to show on the outside. But he said, we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight of the sin which does so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that's set before us. Why? Because we're looking unto Jesus. You know, it may seem hard sometimes, but just go ahead and run the race. Amen. It might seem unfair sometimes, but go ahead and run the race. Amen. I ain't never been. You can't be a giver upper. You can't be somebody always giving up. You may get weary sometimes, but go ahead and run the race. Why? Because I'm looking unto Jesus. I'm looking to, I'm looking down the road. I'm looking, look, there are hurdles. There are things blocking. There are things that we have to jump over. There's obstacles, but I'm looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross and he despised the shame. But guess what? Now he sat down at the right hand on the of the throne of god yes so we're gonna get there yes lord we're gonna get to the other side because jesus said we would amen but in the meantime while we're on our way let god do what he's gonna do for you in that holding pattern stay in that holding pattern and let god do what he does best amen we are his creation we weren't created to be sinners, we were created to be worshipers and doers of the word of God. That's right. Hallelujah. We were created to praise our God. That's right. Thank God. First lady said, in the meantime, I'm holding on to God. 
because in his promises, they are yea and they are amen. His promises are yea and amen. You can't beat God. <laughs> Everybody asking me, look, I can go into another session. I don't even know what time it is. I can go into another session. I can keep on talking because that's just how good God is. Amen. But while we are waiting, just hold on to the word of God. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. It is a guarantee. I don't guarantee too many things because there's nothing that you can you can really uh, 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 trust in now. You can't even trust in people, but you can trust in God. Look here. Share and like this video. Tell somebody about Jesus. Oh, yes. Tell somebody to go to uh, 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 just the word and, and listen to and hear the word of God. I thank God, amen, because I'm just going to deliver the word of God. It's not my opinion. It's not a philosophy. It's not something I pulled off of Google. The Lord will speak to me because he knows what I need and what you need, amen. And I tell you, he have taught me and showed me how to be first partaker of what I am talking about. Hallelujah. And I know that he's a deliverer. I know he can save your soul. I know that he can deliver you from sin. Amen. I Like I said, I don't care. God don't care if you are a rank sinner, which what, what they call rank sinner folk that really did. Rank. But I think everybody is a rank sinner because, you know, uh, we are all going to the same hell if we in sin. There's no uh, penthouse suite in hell for the best sinner and and then the other sinners get the the bottom of the, the lower deck <laughs> no hell is made for the devil and his angels and everybody that decides that they don't want to choose jesus but today you can make jesus your choice today if you hear my voice when you hear my voice harden not your heart look God wants to save you right now. And there is no secret what God can do. You got witnesses. You're encompassed about with witnesses that have been saved. You can read the Bible and read about those witnesses. You can look around. When you go to church, amen, you can see the witnesses, the cloud of witnesses that God has delivered and that God has saved. God has delivered us from the hand of the devil. Ah, hallelujah. Thank you. My home is heaven. Yes, Lord. Your home can be heaven too. So if you don't know the Lord as your personal savior, you can come to know him today. You can come to know him today. And I want you to repeat after me if you want to be saved right now. Lord, I want to be saved. I am a sinner and I need you to forgive me. Forgive me of my sins. I know that Jesus is the Son of God. I know that he died, he was buried, and he rose again. So I believe that he is the savior of the world. Save my soul. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray that and you really meant it from your heart. God has saved you through his son, Jesus Christ. The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, thou shalt be saved. It is done. Thank you. Now, just praise the Lord. Because the angels in heaven are rejoicing because you gave your life to Jesus. Praise the Lord. I'm going to clap my hands for you now. Hey, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 
I believe that somebody got saved. I, I just trust and believe because God's word will not return unto him void. It's going to accomplish that that he pleases. And it's going to prosper in the thing where unto he sent it. So the word of God is working right now. Father, I want to pray for those that's looking, Lord, that may be in a holding pattern. And they can't see their way out. They don't see change. They can't see how the people that they're praying for are going to come out of that situation. But there is nothing too hard for you, God. And so, Lord, settle it in their spirit that your promises will come to fruition. Settle it in their spirit that your word is true and that it will come to pass. Increase our faith, God. Somebody faith need to be increased. Help our unbelief, God. Somebody got a, a little bit of doubt, God. And you know and you see it, but you'll help us. And so, Lord, we thank you right now for answered prayer. We thank you that before we call, I thank you. Before we call, you answered. And while we're yet speaking, you hear us. I thank you for stirring, for provoking, for encouraging God. I thank you right now through your word. It is done. We give you the praise and glory and honor for it. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you all. Listen, like this video, share this video. I'm going to, I'm trying to figure out how to go for my Just the Word page. I'm still, uh, we're still working on it. Amen. And soon I, I might try to go from here and there or share it and both. I don't know how we can interchange it. But uh, nevertheless, the word of God will be going forth. Um, and, and I'm just grateful. So like and share this video, please. Um, and then tell your friends to like and share it. Amen. And because uh, this gospel is going to be preached in all the world. Amen. 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 It's going to be a witness to every nation. That's right. And then Jesus going to make his return. So I'm glad I'm I'm part of the, the end time campaign. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Part of the end time campaign. And when you like and share this video, you part of the end time campaign, too, that we getting this gospel out. So I thank God for you. Amen. God be with you until we meet again. And again, like I say, Live the life that you talk about and that you sing about. In Jesus' name, God be with you until we meet again. <laughs> amen and amen.